What's up, everybody? Jake here, and now we're doing something a little bit different. Welcome to the first ever episode of Underachieving with Jake. Uh, back in the day, I used to do a podcast called uh, Underachievers, uh, Underachievers Games, things like that. I still want to keep that name and it's the spirit of what that was, and that was just us, me and some friends, talking about video games. Now, we're still going to apply that here to Off Panel, Off Topic, but... This is going to be more of an essay, long-form video talking about one particular topic. And today's topic is the one and only Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas is an interesting game, at least for me. Because it was a game that was on my radar pretty early on because of the success of Fallout 3. Now, I'll be honest, there, there's going to be some purists out there, some people that might be upset with me. But I never played the original Fallout games, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, I wasn't nearly the age for that, because keep in mind, I'm a millennial, so when those games came out, <laughs> I was like 4 or 5, which is not the proper age to be playing a Fallout game, any Fallout game, so there you go, but uh, I came across Fallout 3 in high school, uh, again, Fallout was never a game that was on my radar, I had, had been playing video games at that time, I've been playing video games for majority of my life, so... Having that game, I, uh, having that game on my radar, um, just wasn't something I, I thought about. Because again, I never really had a gaming PC. I've never had a gaming PC. I've always been a console kid. PS One, PS Two, uh, PS Three, Three Sixty. Now I still haven't got the PS Five or the Xbox Series X or S. But one day. Anyway, regardless, I never had those growing up those games as a frame of reference. So Fallout 3 was the first introduction I had to the Fallout franchise. Now, people are going to have their opinions about that. And it, honestly, Fallout 3, for the most part, is pretty heavily um, favored. Now, people have their criticisms of, this game, of that game, and I think that's a, a fair game. And honestly, maybe someday down the road I'll do a full-on something like this, you know, full-on video essay underachieving episode about Fallout 3, because I do want to talk about that game, because it's hugely influential, and I, and I like to think that whether or not you feel great about Fallout 3, I still think it's a, a, a great achievement in showing what it was able to do making a 3D Fallout game. So keep that in mind, too, when we talk about this game, that I've only had experience with the 3D versions of these games. So I've only played Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, uh, Fallout 4, and begrudgingly a little bit of Fallout 76. Again, I'll get hate for that too. <laughs> I know Fallout 76 has its fans. I've tried the game multiple times. I just couldn't get into it. Uh, I am going to make a video about that game too because I, I want to give it like one more like legitimate shot, but so far it's just the two or three times that I've tried it, it's just not been appealing to me, and it sucks. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. Today, we're talking about Fallout New Vegas. And also, how this is going to be different than other critiques, I'm not going to break down every little thing of the game. I'm only going to mostly be talking about my playthrough and how it impacted me story-wise and the lore that goes into this playthrough. Because mostly I want to talk about how I reached the conclusions that I got and really why I think, for the most part, I kind of played it the way I would want to play it. As I mentioned, Fallout, my experience with it is not nearly as advanced as some other players, so I don't necessarily have the uh, nostalgia and the t close ties to Fallout 1 and 2. But as I mentioned, Fallout 3 was a big enough influence on me that the minute I saw a trailer for Fallout New Vegas, I really wanted to play it. Now, the the funny thing behind this story is, again, this these games came out in high school, and my experience mostly was with Fallout 3, and I remember vividly, and this is what was so funny about my school and just funny how these things uh, work out and how people have their opinions of, of what clicks are in high school. We would talk about Fallout 3 and finding different things on the map and doing different quests, finding unmarked quests, all this stuff in football practices during two days in the August heat. We were talking about Fallout 3, and then we would all talk about it, go home, find those locations, find those things that we were talking about, and then come back and, and, and go back to a football practice and go back to work. That that was my attachment so with Fallout 3. So Fallout New Vegas rolls around in 2010, comes out a week before my birthday, October 19th, uh, roughly a week before my birthday, my 17th birthday. So, of course, the first thing I do, I'm like, hey, 
to my parents. I'm saying, hey, if you want to give me a birthday present, Fallout New Vegas, that's where it's at. So, you know, luckily for me, my parents agreed, and, and the rest is history. I got that game on my PlayStation 3 at the time and really just played the shit out of it. <laughs> No, uh, especially in high school when you don't have much going on. That, that's the game to play. Now, it's funny that I th- I just completed my third playthrough of this game. I played it in 2010 when it came out, the vanilla game on PS3. Didn't get any of the DLCs for it at the time because I was a, a, a col- or not college kid, a high school kid with no money. So I uh, didn't get the DLC, so I don't. I didn't have any frame of reference, which, by the way, I will cover the DLCs, but I'm doing a separate video dedicated to just the DLCs, so we will talk about those. Um, so I'd only play that. So then, three years later, uh, my roommate at the time has the Ultimate Edition, so I can finally play the DLCs. Uh, still haven't played Dead Money. I did skip that one, but I played the other three. Don't remember it at all. I don't think I remember anything from those playthroughs. But 2013, I did another playthrough, and then here we are 10 years later in 2023, and this is my third playthrough. Each playthrough is funny for me because it's different phases of my life, but yet I still have very similar approaches. Because this game, I this playthrough, I really, really wanted and stressed playing through on a certain way. I was like, okay, I'm going to be like these hot shit, top cop, NCR, ranger dude. And that's truly how I was going to play it. Now, I didn't remember (laughs) back in the day that I had, or back in the 2013 playthrough, that had already really gone through Headstrong and and CR because my first playthrough, I did the independent route. And I wanted to do something more related to the faction. I went with the NCR. Now, that happened to a certain point, and we'll get into that. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's break down just how I feel so far with Fall, or how I feel after playing roughly 40, 45 hours of Fallout New Vegas. One thing that sticks out to me still is just the open-ended nature of this story, all of the branching storylines, all of the different endings and potential slides. I think my slide at the end of the, my playthrough, this most recent one, was feel kind of short. But I love that, that that is so much to it. And it really does feel, and something that uh, Chris Avalon was talking about leading up to the game and has talked about since, and, and really has been a big f- focus of those games, is the world adapting to you, the world changing to you. It's open-ended. Um, and I think it gets more... I just marvel at a game that is 13 years old and still has those moments of of instant understanding of the impact I'm making on the world and the difference is changing. A big example for me is uh, the arcade Ganon storyline or the the Boomer storyline where um, it has a direct impact on the final battle of Hoover Dam if you do it correctly. And I think most, if not all, factions and um, companions have some sort of impact on the Battle of the Hoover Dam. Now, I know, I know, maybe not necessarily all uh, companions, but all factions do have that. And of course, we have the faction represent, uh, reputation system and all those things. Um, but even when I played it in high school, even when I played it all the way back when I was 17 years old, I still had troubles with it because the factions are kind of laid out for you in a way that you think, hey, it's pretty simple. You got, you got, Caesar or Kaiser, however you want to say it, Caesar's Legion, slavers, old world, like ancient times, barbaric type of rule. Clearly, they're the bad guys. Then you've got the NCR. They've got Republic in, your, <laughs> Republic in their name. They, 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 they've made this huge empire out west. They've rebuilt California. So they can, they have to be the new guys and the new solution for New Vegas. Right? Right? And again, even in high school, I was picking up on those things with the characters and the conversations. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I don't know. And that, again, uh, adds to what makes this play this playthrough so fun for me and just just playing through this game all over again and getting those feelings, and those remembering those moments of nostalgia being like, oh, I remember this. But when I did it back then, it, uh, it, it worked out this way or did it this way. You know, another good example is this time around. I didn't max out my speech. My second playthrough, I maxed out my speech. At the very end of the game, I just speech-checked General 
Oliver and I speech checked uh, Leg Atlantis. Didn't have any fights, didn't have any issues, ends the game. This time around, I said, fuck it, let's go, <laughs> let's go fucking, let's get, let's do Batman 89, let's get nuts. So I ended up fighting uh, Leg Atlantis and fighting um, Oliver. I don't remember the like, very first playthrough of what happened, because you gotta give me a break, that was 13 years ago. Um, but again, just, just seeing those changes and feeling that change and, and having that moment, like when you, again, even now, when you still see uh, Leg it, you still see the introduction of General Oliver, those are still big moments. And even in those moments, I'm not quite sure. Well, except for Leggett. He's a, Lannis is a fucking, Lannius is a fucking lunatic. But, <laughs> but even then with Oliver, I don't, I didn't want to get into a conversation with him. I, I, I tried my best to get out of it, but I didn't have the speech check. So I had to end up fighting him anyway. And they actually, they killed me a couple of times. Got fucked over in that. But, um, Again, in those moments, I wasn't sure. And then there was choices I had to make at the Hoover Dam for that independent playthrough. And I was like, I don't know if I would have done that, or I didn't know if I wanted to do that. And like, there were a couple of NCR people I had to kill on my way to an independent New Vegas, and I felt bad about it. I really did. But anyway, let's kind of talk about the factions. I, again, this whole point of this is this whole video, this whole essay is me just kind of talking about my experiences with this game. So the factions, the three main ones, four main ones really are Mr. House, NCR, Caesar's Legion, and Yes Man. So again, I started this playthrough anticipating going through the NCR, you know, path. Then I remember, then I saw my achievements. I was like, okay, I've already done it. So then I had a decision because as I was playing through the NCR stuff, I realized I don't like doing the stuff for the NCR. I mean, I did for a certain amount of things. And I think what what's great about this game is the characters and the writing. And it, it, you, the, the thing that I've always noticed in playing this 13 years later, I will put up with the crashes. I will put up with this, this ugly engine. I will put up with the nastiness and the griminess of this game because the stories are so compelling and the characters are so interesting or funny or gross or nasty or dumb or <laughs> not necessarily being dumb but like ignorant about this and you know people that have different feelings about the wasteland all these other things all it it feels like the world is like i said it responds to me and i feel like the world is lived in i think that's with these sandboxes with rpgs with, with these kind of games it's always important to have that lived in experience and have that i mean i'll tell you i'll tell you man in this 40 to 45 hours I was getting lost. I was getting swept up in it all over again. And that's all you can ask for when you play a game like this is to get stuck in that world and get lost in that world and just eat up all the lore and try and find all the secrets and find all the special weapons. Uh, you know, Do as many quests as you can. Find all these different side quests. Do a bunch of unmarked quests. It was fun for me because I, yeah, I, was, I was just sitting there and just like connecting the dots. Of doing, and it, when I got the Explorer perk at level 20, oh shit. Then the whole maps open up. I know every every location I can go to, and even now as I'm talking to you doing this video, I'm still thinking about like things that I missed in my playthrough that I want to go back and experience and go back and do, uh, just because there might be a, uh, a special item or there might be a, a character that I missed or a possible um, quest line that I missed, and that really just is why I love this game so damn much and why I've played through it three times and I'll probably keep playing through it more and more. And that's why I think there's such a dedicated community. I mean, the uh, there's uh, the New Vegas FNV and the Fallout New Vegas subreddits are still very active. There's a, there's a bunch of Facebook groups that are still very active. So there's a lot of passion behind this game and i think the the reason for it is because they re and they really care for it i mean shit remember a couple of months ago when there was leaks and rumors that bethesda was going to announce uh, either a new vegas remaster or a new vegas 2 and people were losing their minds about it i was too <laughs> because i would love to see especially obsidian get more opportunities in this and the reason i i singled out obsidian because of course they made the first two games they know so much about this lore, especially Chris Avalon. He has the freaking Fallout Bible and all this stuff going on. And the reason I think people really want Obsidian to get back to this, and I will talk about the uh, Outer Worlds at some point uh, and play through that again, but it's just they have such a smart grasp on what works in the world of Fallout, but what you know what works in the world of RPGs in general. You could play this 
like I did, you can fight for an independent New Vegas, or you could join up with House and have a little bit more of a oligarchy or more of a dictatorship kind of rule, or you can just be a total. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean this. If you're, ba- I just think if you side with Caesar, you're you're a bad person. But you could do that run too. And I will tell you, as much as I hate Caesar's Legion, I also want. This is called underachieving with Jake. I want the achievements, so I have considered doing a uh, legion run but if i do a legion run that is going to be i'm going to make him the dumbest character ever lowest intelligence full-on just big dumb blunt force like they're just it's just going to be unarmed (laughs) and a dummy but you know what there you go that's how good this game is i'm already playing but again this is rambling this is more of a free form conversation with you about this so i'm sorry if i do ramble Let's get to the factions. So, yeah, Mr. House, NCR, Yes Man are the main ones, but there's also the Great Cons. There's the Boomers. There's a small chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. There's even some Enclave in this game. And then there's the three families on the Strip, which is the White Glove Society, uh, the Chairman, and the Omeritas. So, it's always hard for me because I like Mr. House as a character. I do. I think he's a, I think he's very well written. There's a lot of great lore behind him. I think there's a really there's a lot of cool things to his character. However, I have some issues with him and some of his choices. <laughs> so I couldn't necessarily side with House. I liked where House's head was at, but I just don't feel like I could have trusted him. So I didn't side with him. That's you know why I went the independent route. I didn't side with uh, House. Now, the NCR is a different story. As you know, I, or as I said, I tried to play through with them and do it through their angles. But then at some point, I hit a wall. And I hit a wall of, like, this seems like I'm going to be doing the same things over and over again with these guys. And I'm not happy about this. Also, looking at you, Brotherhood of Steel. We'll get there. So, NCR, I, I was going with it for a while. But then, I again, I hit that point of, like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. So, I, I moved on from that. Then we have Caesar's Legion. I'm never going to join Caesar's Legion. And then we go from there. So uh, the great cons, the boomers, all this stuff. Another thing I noticed about this playthrough, maybe it's with my older age. Maybe it's just because I'm, I, I, I love the story and I love the characters and I want more to the lore. Whatever the case may be, I noticed this playthrough. I tried my best, and I failed, Try my best to not necessarily be a pacifist playthrough, but try and be a little bit more diplomatic. And <laughs> that didn't always work that well. So I want to talk about the tribes, as a Yes Man would call them, that you deal with. Um, and it doesn't matter whose side you're on there. You have to deal with these these factions in some way. Or you can, you can go fight them, go talk to them to join you. You can completely ignore them. That's, again, the beauty of this game. You can play it every one. Uh, the great cons. We'll just kind of go down the list that I have. The Great Cons hate me. I'm vilified with them. I don't like them. And the reason I don't like them is they are aligned with Caesar. Now, I know I'm going to sound like a hypocrite. But again, this is my playthrough, not yours. Now, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because I um, didn't really try and resolve anything with them diplomatically. I know that you can talk them and break them with their their, their alliance with Caesar's Legion. But, on the other hand, it could have just been one less faction I had to deal with. And one less... This is going to sound bad. One last thing, a quest that I could deal with. As I just said, oh, there's other quests I wish I could have done. I just don't really care about the Great Cons. Because they themselves don't even know what kind of history or what kind of thing they stand for. So, I don't really care. So... I took Boone with me, and I, I'm i not proud of this. Again, I promise you, this is a much more nicer diplomatic playthrough. I took Boone with me, and we kind of cleared out the the the, gray, uh, the is it Red Canyon, Red Rocks Canyon. No, Red Rocks is Colorado. Anyway, we cleared out their space. I'm not proud of it, but we killed them all because again, I didn't think I didn't think I had the speech. I might have. <laughs> okay, look, let's just get out of the way. I don't like the Great Cons. I think they're a dumb group. I got to, I got them taken care of. I don't need to justify myself to you. So Great Cons took them out of the took them out of the pictures. Went with, with uh, Boone, took care of that. Also, Boone is a great com- I think all the companions are great. I finally got the achievement when I got all of them. Uh, I think all the companions are great. 
I really, really, I've always loved Boone. I've always ran with Boone in my playthroughs. Always run with, almost always run with Rex too. I would mixed it up. I ran with Raul for a little bit. I never played with him. I did a little bit of stuff with Lily, but I'm getting sidetracked from that. Next up, the Boomers. They love me. They idolize me because I actually help them. Now, getting to Nellis is a bitch, I'll, I'll say, I, but, you know, hey, they, they got to protect their shit. So if I had artillery like that and I could stop raiders and, you know, bad people from getting into my camps, I would do the same thing. So I understand. Um, but I just wanted to help the boomers because I, again, thought they were so fascinating. And maybe it's because of the Fallout 3 playthrough. Maybe it's because of what I know about how vault Tech treats their vaults and the lore of Fallout I don't know what it is, but I just wanted to help them. So I went through and did all the, the, the uh, uh, is it Valer, Valore is the name of the quest line. I went through and did all that. I I went to lose. The funny thing is I didn't, <laughs> when I played this, it was, it was really funny. Because there's a part where you have to go and get a woman that had been flirting with, um, I'm gonna put, I put my head into my mic because I can't remember his name. One of the one of the boomers, they're in love, and you have to like arrange for her to leave the Crimson Caravan where she works, and then go to Nellis Air Force Base and join him and join the boomers. Uh, in there, there's a speech check to be. She's like, "Well, I can go and go do that. Can you get me out of my contract? And then also, can you get me paid?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know, man. It seems like you're asking for a lot here." So I try to do it. Speech check immediately failed. So I just had to be like, "Well, you can leave, but you're not getting paid." She's like, oh, I guess that's fine if you're love. And then she goes off and they live happily ever after. And, you know, little things like that, little quests like that, you've kind of, they're there to make you feel good. However, it's also, you know, you can also lie to her and just have her go there and get artillery bombed to hell. That's funny. That's, again, the dark, twisted sense of humor of Fallout, and I love it. But, again, I just didn't, I, I, I just... Why did I attack the Great Cons versus the Boomers? I don't know. The Great Cons had caused me more headaches at that time, and the Boomers seem to keep to themselves, and they still do. They keep to themselves because why wouldn't they? Why would they bother? Why would they be worried about anybody when they've got fucking artillery sh- shells and, and and rocket launchers and grenade launchers? Like they're fine. Um, yeah, I cleaned out their ant problem, helped with their solar arrays. And then I raised this big bomber, which was a really cool quest where you jump down to the bottom of the water and you blow this thing up on the surface. And then they use it at the Battle of Hoover Dam, which is fucking cool. That's also why I did it. I knew if I helped them enough, they would help me at the Hoover Dam and they'd fuck everything up. So I said, yes. So I joined up with uh, the boomers. They idolized me. We raised the bomber and they assisted me at the Battle of Hoover Dam. Now, the Brotherhood of Steel. I was conflicted. Because I, again, don't have the frame of reference as other people do with Fallout 1 and 2 of what some people would view as the more accurate interpretation of who the Brotherhood are. Because that interpretation is the Brotherhood of people that they want, they're obsessed with technology and they get their technology and then they hoard it and they kind of keep it from other people. Now, Fallout 3 makes them look like these Boy Scout good guys. And then there's that argument of like, well, this is the East Coast Fallout crew or East Coast Brotherhood crew that split off, and there was a whole civil... That's where the outcasts are, like the way they are in Fallout 3, and blah, 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 whatever. I'm just going to push... At this point, I was like, I'm going to put that aside and take it as I can here, open-mindedly. Because when I first played it, of course I helped out. In 2010, 17-year-old me, only having Fallout 3 as a frame of reference, of course I helped them and, and did the thing there and all that stuff. Now, knowing what I know now, <laughs> I said now twice, I'm like, no, I'm not going to help those guys the way that you think I would, or blah, 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 blah. And I took it as it come, quest by quest. The more I work with them, the more I realize two things about the Brotherhood of Steel. One, they're dorks, all right? I'll say it, they're dorks. If you're going to name your, you're, you're going to name people Scribe, you're going to name people Paladin, you're going to name uh, Knight, and elder and all that they're dorks i'll say it they're a bunch of cosplaying dorks well i guess that's what you could say about caesar's legion but regardless um i helped them for a while and i also did it because this was the first playthrough believe it or not with veronica i never had her running as a companion she was a companion with me for a good portion of this playthrough i would say 
The only constant was Rex because he's a good boy at, until the end because I somehow lost him. Um, <laughs> gotta love the bugs. Uh, most of my playthrough was Boone, Rex, or Veronica, Rex. I had Raul, Rex for a while. Rex was kind of the constant because you could roll with him and another con- uh, companion. Uh, which is funny because when you get a higher level, it's kind of unfair. Uh, but I rolled with her a lot. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna. I like Veronica. She's funny. She's an interesting character. I'm gonna work with her. Let's try and work with the Brotherhood of Steel. So then I got her quest. I could make you care, where she is trying to say that like the elders misguided. Oh, by the way, she talks about um, Father Eli- or Elijah, Father Elijah in Dead Money. It's. I just think that's cool that he's the villain there. But we'll, again, we'll talk about those DLCs when we get there. Um. So. McNamara, which which is funny too, because I never played it th- this way. I forgot that if you go there without Veronica, they put a bomb collar on you, so then you're stuck to do their missions right then and there. So I was lucky enough to take Veronica with me and get in without having to deal with the bomb collar thing, so I could do the <laughs> the Brotherhood of Steel things at my own pace, which was nice. Um, but it just I don't know the Brotherhood of Steel annoyed me. I think that the more I'm finding out, we talk about the gray and the good and bad decisions. I think at some point I get to a point where sometimes these factions just annoy me. So I'm doing all these all this work for them, where I'm going all over the map uh, to 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 find these hollow tapes for these guys, and then I go talk to these scouts about things. And again, this was later in my playthrough, so this is things that I already know. So I'm just hopping around places for no reason, and. I'm helping out, and I'm doing these things, and again, I want to do it because my fr- it, I'm doing it for my friend Veronica. I want to help her out, and it's also at this point in the game where I'm trying to kind of tie up some loose ends, and I, I was at the point where I'm like, I want to do as many uh, companion quests and wrap up the companion stuff before I go to Hoover Dam and all this stuff, and I get to a certain point where I can make you care shows up, and then there's the option, because then at, at the end of it, she's like, okay, they're not going to listen to me, because she's the believer of we need to get out of Hill- Hidden Valley we should work with the followers of the apocalypse. We should work with maybe the NCR. Like We should work with these other factions around here because we're just staying here and hiding while everybody else is doing other shit and you know trying to make New Vegas better. They don't like it, of course, because <laughs> they suck in this game, and I think they suck mostly all the time too because actually, you know what? Fallout 4, they're kind of shitty. But anyway, they're shitty too. But anyway, uh, then you have a decision. So you can convince her to stay with the Brotherhood of Steel or you convince her to join the followers of the Apocalypse and uh, do that. So I'm like, hey, go be a follower of the Apocalypse. You clearly, you come and go as you please here anyway and Elijah's not there anymore. You don't have a ton of ties to it, whatever. Set it up, get her set up at the outpost. So like, oh, come back tomorrow. The doctor will be in tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to wrap up this other loose end. So I go and put the fucking sonic emitter radio signal thing at black mountain because i already cleared out the super mutants and all that do all that go back to the followers outpost and they murdered these people i go into the room and it's all these fucking paladin dorks lined up and there's ash piles and dead bodies and they killed these followers of the apocalypse people these innocent people that had nothing to do with this conflict all because they're mad veronica left and like if you leave the brotherhood of steel that means death and then that moment, I'm like, I'm going to kill all these motherfuckers. And then after I do that, I'm going to kill everyone in that bunker. <laughs> and you know why? Because they made my friend Veronica sad. And they're never going to listen to me. Now you're going to say, but Jake, there's a playthrough where you could work with the Brotherhood and they'll help you. At the I don't care. You hurt my friend Veronica's feelings. You killed innocent people that didn't deserve it. And you're a bunch of dorks anyway. So, boom, I yeah, I self-destructed and collapsed the bunker. They were done. No more Brotherhood in the in the, uh, in the the Mojave. Uh, the Enclave. I did the whole R.K. Ganon Remnants um, quest line. Again, I did, I think I did, I, I finished it. Yeah, I think I did every, I have done every Companions quest at that point. So, or at this point. So I did Ganon's side quest, which was cool. I First of all, Shazam himself voices Arcade Ganon, which I always think is hilarious. But I love that it's the remnants of the Enclave. We're not seeing the Enclave be that impacted in it, which is, again, I don't know, because I know this game was made in 18 months. I don't know the thought process of where they stepped in and said, oh, um, 
Todd's team, they use the Enclave and the Brotherhood in this as well. They're kind of the main conflict. But the Brotherhood and the Enclave are kind of, poof, they're not really a big deal in this. They're very small. That's why you have the Remnants group. And I really um, loved Arcade's quest line I, I, just because it was fun to... I'm a sucker for getting the band back together stories, but it was really cool to go back and see these people in the Enclave that weren't, except for one, that weren't brainwashed by the propaganda that is that was the Enclave and that there are people that you don't see a lot of these stories in Fallout. You don't see a lot of these stories in general, at least I don't think, where you're seeing people that were a part of the bad guys who didn't who weren't necessarily bought into it they were just a part of it because they thought that this was the right thing and with more time and in reflection you can tell some of them regretted and want to do good and man to make a change and it was again it, it's it's like that that quest with the boomers it's like those little quests that have happy endings because so many of these quests don't have happy endings. So many of these things don't have happy endings in the wasteland to so, so to see a little bit of um, wholesomeness with the remnants. It was nice, except for the gunfight you have to get into uh, depending on who you side with. And so of course I made them sign with the NCR because again, fuck the Legion. Uh, and then of course uh, I talked arcade into joining me at the dam, which was kind of scary at first because I get out and I'm in the Remnant's armor, which is the best armor in the game. I leave out of the little bunker and he just comes running up in the uh, Enclave armor from Fallout 2. And I'm like, jeez. Which, by the way, Fallout 2's Enclave armor, better than Fallout 3's. I'll say it. I'll say it. Uh, wrapping things up with just all the factions that uh, the, the stories along the way and the Mojave, the three families. So I actually fucked this up. So... The three families are the chairman, the White Glove Society, and the Omertas. The chairman, you don't really do anything other than kill Benny or do whatever you do with Benny in the storyline. Uh, other than that, they're kind of whatever. But the Omertas are like kind of like the crime boss family. A little bit is how they act. They have the uh, prostitution. Uh, and we, there's so many stories I can share about this game of like just me doing things randomly. I'm like, oh. I fucked that up. I fucked this up originally because I did. I didn't want to do the quest the way it was because the way that I did the quest was the Omeritas were going to cause trouble and attack the strip. And I was like, wait a minute, no, not on my watch, pal. So I fucked that up and had to reload a save and do that over again because I really, really wanted to get the Pimp Boy 3 billion. And when you look at that thing, you're like, Jake, do you really need that? I'm like, yes, I do. I do. Look at it. But <laughs> so I really was like speeding through that quest to get the pimp boy three billion. And then I realized, oh, shit, I might have doomed this strip. So I went back, fixed it, changed it and got that taken care of. So I stopped their plans to destroy the strip and uh, took out Big Sal because he was a pain in my ass. Uh, White Glove Society uh, stopped the cannibals. That was another one I kind of screwed up. <laughs> I had to go through it again. But I did. Uh, but what I did was fun. So I m kind of mixed and matched. Uh, so I saved um, Ted Gunderson and reunited him with his dad without any of the white glove people knowing. And then I, because I had high enough uh, intelligence, I was able to cook the food as almost as if it was human meat. And then I killed the one cannibal dude. So stop the cannibals, save the strip. And that's uh, pretty much all I have to say about factions. So uh, you you know by now, you've seen the title of the video, you know what I'm talking about. So when I say who I've sided with in the grand scheme of things, obviously I went with an independent New Vegas. Now, again, I've played this game three times, 2010, 2013, now again in 2023, and I have chosen the independent route twice. Twice. So my issues mostly me uh, come with... Again, at a certain point, I get annoyed. The NCR, I think they mean well. And um, and when fully in an area, they can provide help for their citizens. However, they only care about the NCR citizens. Plus, they are severely understaffed in the Mojave. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I would do quests in these different camps and these different places for the NCR. And it's always, we don't have enough manpower. We don't have enough ammo. We don't have enough of this. We don't have enough of that. And it's like, 
I felt like most of my quests were cleaning up their messes because they didn't have enough support, and I felt like um, I felt like we could live together. So I didn't try and I helped the NCR when I could, and I also did my best to not fight them. I didn't really want to mess with them, so I was like, "Hey, I'm building this independent Vegas under your nose. We can work out. Um, we can we can figure this thing out." Didn't it doesn't work because eventually the further you progress in the game. Um, then eventually, like, well, fuck you. You're working against our interests because we want the dam. We want to run New Vegas. And that's, again, a problem. Um, but, yeah, again, I, I don't think the NCR is the bad guy, but I don't think they're 100% the good guy because we talk about the massacre at Bitter, uh, Bitter Springs when they killed a bunch of innocent great cons because of what they blame on miscommunication. Uh, you could talk about, again, as I said, multiple. When I go into Prim, Prim's taken over by escaped convicts, and there's a whole f- gunfighting problem. I had to deal with that myself. We had all these NCR guys just camped out. What the fuck are you guys doing? By the way, Prim, I made Prim Slim the sheriff. Why not? If you're getting the option to make a robot a sheriff, you take it. But again, I think the NCR does, means well. But again, they just they're not they're not prepared to deal with the 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 people and things of the Mojave. And I think that's why I didn't side with them. I have never. Ever, 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 ever thought about doing a play for the Legion through with the Legion. I know I talked about it early in this video, but I, I were to do it, it'd only be for achievements because fuck the fuck them, fuck those slaver pieces of shit. I'd consider doing it for the achievements. I really would, but <sighs> that's just really, really, really. If I want all the achievements, I just now should could I have heard. Kaisar out could I have gone there and talked to him and dealt with him and all that but I could have I really could have but at the end of the day I know where I'm going to end up and I'm going to murder all of them anyway so there was no point uh, <laughs> but funny story about the Legion I was uh, hated and then I got the mark of the mark of Kaisar from Volpus and I didn't think about it and then so I took back um, Nelson from the, C- from the Legion for NCR and then the Legion hated me again, so I couldn't get into Cottonwood Cove, couldn't get into the fort. I had to because I didn't kill Benny, so Benny escaped all the way to the fort. So I had to go there eventually. And at one point, I just said, fuck it, killed a bunch of dudes, or killed some dudes at Cottonwood Cove, stole their costumes. Their little. By the way, talk about dorks, cosplaying dorks as the Caesar's Legion. I took the thing there, and I didn't know this because I went in no problem. No issues, but I didn't know if you get the closer you get to Caesar, and the higher, like the uh, like the Centurion, like the higher level, higher ranking Legion guys, and the dogs, they'll sniff you out through your disguise. Didn't know that. So by the time I got into the tent, I had been getting killed like three or four times because I kept just trying to run in. Because my main goal was like, fuck it, I just need to get to Benny and get the fucking chip. I just need the chip. I just need the chip. I just need the chip. So eventually, I forgot I had a. And again, at this point, the assassins, had, the Legion assassins, had been coming after me. So I had a. I was pretty armored with that with uh, plasma grenades. So I run in, see Caesar at the end, and I'm just like, fuck you, just throw, a, uh, just chuck a plasma grenade in there. And then I throw down a bunch of mines as they're running towards me because I'm like, they're going to come at me because they're all melee and they're going to run over these mines. And that worked. That seemed to be there. And as you can see right here, Caesar's dead. All, all hail Jake. All hail independent New Vegas. Suck it. Now Caesar, or Kaiser, whatever, has he has a very good backstory, very interesting lore. Again, I just know who he is. And when you take women... And treat the and, and turn them into incubators essentially because they turn them into slaves and they just use them to reproduce and then those kids are slaves and they turn them into soldiers and it's a never ending cycle and fuck the legion I shouldn't have to keep saying this so finally I feel that Mister House has his heart in the right place but he still wants to be the sole ruler of the strip I don't like dictator dictatorships in any fashion even if Mr. House might have some good points and he's trying to do some good. Now, my independent playthrough ended where <laughs> my character was kind of dickish to Oliver because I was kind of annoyed at this point because I was in, like, the third try. Uh, but I pretty much said, you know, it doesn't belong to you. You guys both lost. This doesn't belong to you. This is a strictly independent New Vegas. And 
I think I achieved it for the most part. And I think that I felt right with this playthrough. And again, it was funny because I was trying to role play something completely different. And then I ended up just kind of playing more of like who I am as a person and who as I would be as a person. And I think that's totally valid too. I don't think that uh, I had to play it as that character or one particular character or whatever the case may be. Uh, so yeah, once, once I got to the Hoover Dam, it, it's funny cause I didn't want to end. And that's one thing I hate about Fallout 3. I know they fixed it with DLC, but, uh, it's something I always had an issue with New Vegas is the fact that it ends at the Hoover Dam. Uh, even with the DLC, cause the DLC, you, you have to play it before Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam is the end all be all, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, by the time I got through with this playthrough, by the time I've wrapped it up, got the slides and rolled the credits or whatever you want to say. I felt like if that were me in that scenario, if I were the courier, I feel like a lot of the choices I made are kind of true who I was. I also played with a lot more car- with good karma because and now I have played through these games as a complete piece of shit. I remember playing through Fallout 3 one time with the Enclave, eating people, <laughs> blew up Megaton, the worst kind of shit. I, I've done that. And it's still a fun game, but it's also like, eh, it's not really me. That's not who I want to be. Now, again, the diplomatic side of me is when it came out in this playthrough, too. And I was trying not to hurt people. And I think I was a little bit more soft on people than I maybe I would have uh, when I when I played. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump up the volume there. Maybe than I would have uh, when I played in high school. Versus, or when I played uh, in college versus where I play now as a dad, as a husband, and just how it is. And I would love to say that uh, it's still possible to play this game in another 10 years, but who knows. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to give you my ending slides, kind of show you where my story ended up when I created this this independent New Vegas, and then uh, we can uh, wrap this thing up uh, in terms of... Actually, you know what? We're going to do it the other way. We're going to talk about a few more things. Then I'll give you the ending slide, and then uh, we'll wrap things up because I'm learning how to do this too. This is the first underachieving with Jake, so we're learning together. Does it hold up? Now, this is the question I feel like I'm going to ask a lot because a lot of the games that I uh, want to do with this um, series of just kind of this open com- this 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 conversation I'm having with you or, or, or whatever you want to call it, these essays, does it hold up? And these are going to be older games. So let's ask this. Does it hold up? The narrative absolutely does. Uh, What still makes this game great after all this time, as I've really been harping on, is the characters in the world. Just the sheer possibilities and role-playing aspects alone are worth your time. This game adapts to you. There are so many different role playing opportunities and the dialogue with, uh, you know, different and different traits and different perks and different things like that. It is still, I think worth your time. If you're into playing a role playing game where you're, you feel like your choices matter, where you feel like you're not quite sure you made the right decision. And there's a lot of questioning and a lot of different scenarios. However, the engine does not hold up. Absolutely does not. Uh, I still ran into my fair share of bugs while playing this on game pass. Uh, <laughs> I think there, I have footage of a couple of them. There's some really bad crashes I've had going into, like, just, cr- I think there was one playthrough I just stopped. I tried to get through, um, and it crashed, like, three or four times, re- like, in a row, and I was in Vault 22, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I, I've given up. Those things are still there. Now, if I were playing on PC with mods, it'd probably be different, but, again, I was only playing on Xbox Game Pass, and it, it man, that game... It looks like a 13-year-old game. Uh, The engine was barely chugging in 2020, and it is on life support in 2023. Um, But I will say, when I was uh, streaming it, it played like a dream on xCloud. No issues on xCloud. Uh, I don't don't even think I had any crashes on xCloud. The only time I had crashes, I think, was when I just played it on my actual console. Uh, But the xCloud, I think, really bumped it up. And the Xbox One. You know, Microsoft really drives home that they they make their backwards compatible games look better um with their with their uh, emulators and, and streaming and things like that i would agree i think this game did look better however you can only polish a turd so much 
<laughs> that has nothing to say about the team that made this game. Uh, clearly, I love this game. I've been talk. I've been literally rambling about it for the past forty minutes. Clearly, I still love this game, but it does have its issues, and uh, that's okay because it's a ten-year-old game, and it is what it is. You can't. You can't. It's a feature. Of uh, Bethesda games, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, let's go to my ending slide, see where my story ended up, and my creating of the independent New Vegas, and then we'll wrap this thing up. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam, securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, part of the Securitron army was diverted to the Strip to keep order. Any chaos on the streets was ended. Quickly. Chaos became uncertainty, then acceptance with minimal loss of life. New Vegas assumed its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Supporting the ideals of independence, the courier was recognized as the man responsible for a truly free New Vegas. He ensured Mr. House's tyranny was broken, and neither Caesar's Legion nor NCR would ever gain control over New Vegas. Though some super mutants and Nightkin continued to journey to the legendary Utopitha, they found little trace of its existence. Some eventually found their way to Jacobstown, but many wandered off into the wastes confused and disheartened. Still grappling with self-doubt over his usefulness in the face of old age, Raul was never able to find peace with himself. Eventually, he left the Mojave and assumed a new name as he had done so many times before. Though the wasteland became anarchic after Hoover Dam, the boomer's display of power dissuaded fortune seekers from attempting to penetrate Nellis. Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. Though she'd seen the writing on the wall, the destruction of the Mojave Brotherhood came far more suddenly than Veronica had expected. The news devastated her. Despite her best efforts to leave her past behind, she found herself compelled to make one final journey to Hidden Valley. There, she paid her last respects to the only family she had ever known. Their leaders destroyed by the Courier, the fiends scattered throughout the wasteland. Without the organization of Motor Runner, Cook Cook, Violet, and Driver Nephi, they were easy prey. After the Courier ensured New Vegas remained free, the followers found that independent Vegas was even more unstable and violent than before. Old Mormon Fort became excessively burdened by the influx of patients, struggling to provide even the most basic of services. Arcade was proud to have been one of the defenders who helped repel the Legion from Hoover Dam. He was prouder still to see the area freed from the shackles of the NCR and Mr. House. Though independence for New Vegas was not all he hoped it could be, Arcade used his enclave knowledge and technology to keep order wherever he could. With New Vegas's independence formally declared, Good Springs thrived. More travelers stopped by Good Springs on their way to and from the Strip, and the locals grew prosperous from the traffic. The slaughter of the Van Graffs and the Crimson Caravan caused no end of trouble for NCR back west. Already struggling, NCR's supply line suffered further as the two caravans withdrew support until the massacre in the east was resolved. Cass lived to see the courier bring down three armies, and by her count, that was three more than she'd expected. She kept quiet about that, though. Thanks to the courier and Lily, a cure for the nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. 
Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. Following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, Freeside came to be known as one of the more stable areas in the region. Ironically, NCR refugees found Freeside safer than most of the rest of New Vegas, where resentment still lingers. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old lady Gibson. Though Novak was a low priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. Though NCR was withdrawing from the region, Boone remained in New Vegas, finding work as a security guard and caravan scout along the highways. While he might have preferred rejoining his old unit, Boone couldn't bring himself to abandon the city where he'd met his wife. The NCR, battered by the loss of the dam, were unable to devote any troops to retaking the correctional facility from the Powder Gangers. As a result, Powder Ganger raids on caravans became an unfortunate fact of life in the Mojave for years to come. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 Powder Gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. Prim Slim proves to be an able-minded, if not able-bodied, sheriff for Prim. And due to his slow speed, some crooks get away without a scratch. But Prim continues to prosper under his watchful robotic eye. After the death of Chief Hanlon, the power of NCR's rangers was broken for years. Their organization, so reliant on the wisdom and guidance of its elder members, became a shadow of what it once was to people across the wasteland. After their bold arrival at Hoover Dam, the remnants disappeared as quickly as they came. Legends of their power spread throughout the Southwest, a reminder of why people once feared the sight of vertebrates in the sky. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. What'd you think? First episode of Underachieving with Jake. Um, this isn't something that's going to be weekly. This isn't even something that's going to be bi-weekly or monthly. I don't even know this schedule. This is just something that um, I've always wanted to do, and I don't want to put a schedule behind it because it takes a long time. I mean, I clocked this game, what, 40, 45 hours is what I put into it to get this playthrough for this video. And that was all on my own volition. I wanted to play this game again. Uh, I have a couple other ideas planned for videos and, and different games, but uh, I don't want to commit to giving you guys any sort of timetable because I, I don't know. I'm playing these at my own pace. I'm not, I don't want to put a deadline. I don't want to rush myself through it. I want to play these in games and enjoy these games the way that I want to enjoy them and, and, and talk about them. But anyway, what was your playthrough? Did you go independent New Vegas? Did you do NCR? Did you for some reason go with the Legion? Let me know down in the comments below. below I'd love to know. Um, I still can't believe the community <laughs> that's behind this game. Uh, just the, the Reddit groups and the Facebook groups and the things that I've seen. So I know people still love this game, talking about this game. So I want to know what you guys play. Because I always love comparing notes of these role-playing games. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. And um, war. War never changes.